Hi, I'm Elisa Sherman, and this is part of the Women's Internet History Project. We're talking about how we got into technology. So let me tell you how I got into technology. First, I learned about computers when I was a temp secretary. So I was temping at a bank, and I was an ATM dispatcher. So I had to learn how to use a computer in order to dispatch ATM repairmen. So I learned how, but a little reluctantly because I was also a writer and I used to write by hand, pen and paper. I was afraid that if I touched a computer, somehow the machine would zap away all my creativity. But I finally did because I was told I could make a few dollars more if I learned computer skills and I did not lose my creativity. In fact, I could type so quickly that it was almost better than writing by hand. Then I learned even more computer skills when I was working as a temp secretary at a defense contractor. So that was how I got into computers. Before that, it was a typewriter. That's, that was my uh, technology <laughs> for quite a long time. Now with those computer skills, I decided I wanted to buy my own computer because again, I wanted to be a writer, so I wanted to print out my work and submit my work. I figured if I had a computer and a printer, then I would get published. Of course, I forgot that you also have to submit the work that you print out, but I did. I typed it all up and I printed it all up and I kept it in a box in my closet. <laughs> but that was my first computer. It was called an Amstrad 1640. It had dual floppies no hard drive, and that's what I used to type up stories. I had a dot matrix printer. And the friend who helped me buy this computer said, well, why don't you buy a modem? And I had no idea what a modem was, but he said, it's this little box here, you connect it to your computer and to the wall and the phone line, and you could dial in to other computers. <laughs> so it all sounded really weird to me, but I said, okay, let's do it. I learned how to dial into local BBSs, bulletin board systems. And it was just really interesting to me that I was connecting to computers that were literally in other people's homes that they had set up open for people to log into. So I'm just typing away one night, my strange new internet hobby, and I saw this message pop up on the screen and it said, do you want to chat? Well. <laughs> I, this was, you know, after war games, and I literally thought my computer had come to life and was talking to me. So I jumped out of my chair, and I'm freaking out, and I'm looking at the computer going, oh my god, oh my god, it's, it's like, you know, my roommates are thinking I'm absolutely crazy. They already thought it was a little weird because I kept doing this online thing with my computer. Well, when I finally calmed down and I typed, who is this? It turned out it was a 17-year-old boy from Brooklyn who just wanted to chat. And that was really my first realization, uh, the gosh, this must have been 1987, 1988. So this was my first realization that there were people, not just computers on the other side of this phone line and my computer, but actually people who could speak to me in real time through the computer typing. So if you think about back then in those days, everything online was really command lines, text. So I joined a couple of online services. One was called Woman's Wire, which was a local, well, a national BBS that was just for women. And one was called Echo New York. So Echo was the New York city version of the well from San Francisco. And it was also a bulletin board system and an online community where people could communicate with one another. And the founder was Stacy Horn, a woman. And I tried socializing in there and I just felt really awkward. I just couldn't get a feel for it. So I quit. And then I got a phone call from Stacy Horn saying, Hi, I'm Stacey Horn, the founder of Echo, and I noticed that you recently quit, and I'm just trying to get more women on the service. Can you tell me why? And so we had this great discussion about the technology and online community. This was so early on. I mean, this is still 
late 80s, early 90s. So I decided not to go back to Echo. I did get more involved in Women's Wire. So this must have been early 90s. And I built some forums and was becoming known as a forum leader, a, a community leader online. And then some things happened and I did probably the most terrible thing you can do as someone who creates resources online. I destroyed the resources I created. I removed them all. I, it was in protest of something and looking back, I, I feel terrible that I did it, but at the time it seemed like the right thing to do. It was showing solidarity for somebody who worked there who we all loved. But that was my first uh, rebellious online act. <laughs> So those were the early days, the early 90s, and I didn't really learn about the web until 1994. I was in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I, oh, well, I was there because I was trying to recuperate from the shock of having been held up at gunpoint in New York City. I knew about the internet by that point, obviously. I've been BBSs, I graduated to commercial online services, I had email, I finally got onto the internet, I used Usenet news groups, I was starting to use email especially, but other online services to market companies. So I was already really familiar, but when I was in Santa Fe, I saw this ad that said, discover the world wide web, learn HTML for $10. Well, I looked at it and I'm like, the World Wide Web, HTML, but there was an email address and I knew email. So I emailed the person and found out, yes, there really was a class. It was one hour long and it was basic HTML. So for $10, I learned basic HTML. This was 1994 and I built my first website, which was like a little test website. And basically I, I took photographs of ducks, I don't know, some images I found on the web and then I told the story of being held up at gunpoint and I took these little pictures of guns and I gave the ducks guns <laughs> and and I told this entire story and stuck it online and it became quite popular in fact it was chosen by one of those early uh, websites that would choose cool websites but then people started to uh, harass me a little bit about it and make fun of it that was my very first website. So my second website was called The Web According to Cyber Girl. So when I first put up my personal website, I didn't want to use my name. I didn't actually even want to use my photo because back then women made up 10% of the internet population. And if you did say that you were a female, you would get harassed. And that's why something like Woman's Wire was a really great space. It was a safer place for women to be online and to express themselves. But on the web, it was very wild west. So I decided to call myself Cyber Girl and make myself a little cartoon character of myself with a cape and a CG on the chest and I was a superhero. I ended up putting up this website and looking for other women who had websites too. And anytime I would find a woman with a website, I would link to them and I called them web girls. Well, what's really weird about the early days of the web, and I'm sure it's true now, of course, but back then it was just so odd. So many men pretended to be women online. So they would have these web websites and you would think they were female, but they were actually men posing as women. I'm not gonna go into the possible reasons of that, <laughs> But it was really hard to find actual women with websites, but I did. And eventually I emailed them all and said, if you're in New York City, let's meet. So in March of 1995, I think it was about six women met at the Cyber Cafe, which was the first Cyber Cafe in New York City. It was down on 8th Street in the East Village. And I remember sitting waiting for the first web girl to show up and I, someone would walk in. I'm like, oh my gosh, is that a web girl? No. Are you a web girl? No. And then I saw this gal walk in and she was gorgeous. She had bl platinum blonde hair with hot pink stripes and she just came right in bold as can be. And I said, oh my gosh, that's a web girl. And it was, it was Phoebe Legere, one of the very, very first web girls at that very first web girls meeting. Well, a lot of things happened after that. That was really the beginning. I think I, wrote about this meeting, this first meeting of the web girls. I wrote about it uh, on my website 
And then all, I, I started getting emails from women saying, hey, can I start one of those? I'm like, one of what? A web girls chapter. Oh, yeah, sure. So I think the first ones were uh, Seattle, Betsy Aoki, uh, New Zealand, uh, Wellington, New Zealand, uh, Australia, uh, Austin, Texas was an early one. Uh, all of a sudden, we had chapters. We were an organization of women helping women learn about the internet and women helping other women find jobs and start businesses in the in internet industry. So that brings us up to the 1990s. So that's a little bit of my internet history. We'd love to hear about yours. This is Elisa Sherman for the Women's Internet History Project.